Welcome back to Genetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about a condition called Jacob syndrome, really just the genetics of it. Um, and J Jacob syndrome is similar in a sense to some of these other conditions that we saw, such as Klinefelter's, Turner syndrome, and triple X syndrome, in the sense that it's an abnormal number of chromosomes. It's an aneuploidy. This one, however, is not an aneuploidy of the X chromosome. This one is an aneuploidy of the Y chromosome. So in this case, we're going to have extra Y chromosomes. Now, over here is a normal male. Normal males have the genotype XY. So here's our red X chromosome and the much smaller Y chromosome. So if you're to have Jacob syndrome, uh, you have to be male, but also you have to have an abnormal number of Y chromosomes. The most common case is where there's two, but there are very rare cases where you may actually see three Y chromosomes. Let's talk about how that actually occurs. And to do that, I actually want to go back and look briefly at something we talked about in the previous video. This was a Punnett square where we talked about how we can develop these other conditions, which are aneuploidies of the X chromosome. For example, triple X syndrome, Turner syndrome, and Klinefelter syndrome. And what I mentioned is that, just in that example, was that we would have to have a secondary oocyte uh, that had an abnormal number of X chromosomes. Um, we could have a case where the secondary oocyte had two X chromosomes, and that could allow us to generate triple X and Klinefelters, or we could have a secondary oocyte that had no X chromosomes. In that case, both of the X chromosomes went to the polar body during meiosis, and so this would allow us to produce Turner syndrome. One thing I failed to mention in that video, although it's not super important, but I'll mention it here, actually the non-disjunction event that can produce these abnormal gametes uh, can actually be in female meiosis and male meiosis. You can still end up with these syndromes right here if you had a sperm cell that donated two X chromosomes, okay? Or you could have a sperm cell that didn't donate any, okay? Um, and you can end up with the same conditions. So what I mean by that is these three conditions can actually be caused by both non-disjunction in female meiosis or oogenesis, and they can be caused by non-disjunction in male meiosis or spermatogenesis, okay? In contrast, Jacob syndrome, which is where we have an abnormal number of Y chromosomes, cannot be caused by the mother. And you should ask yourself why. Why can't you cause Jacob syndrome if you're the mother? Well, that's because women don't have a Y chromosome. They can't donate a Y chromosome if they don't have it. So that being said, only men can cause Jacob syndrome because they're the only ones that can donate a Y chromosome. And to do this, they would have to donate at least two Y chromosomes. So of course, the most common cases where they're gonna donate two Y chromosomes. So just imagine here, we have a sperm cell that momentarily had the genotype YY, and it's going to fertilize a normal secondary oocyte. And if you have a sperm cell that's YY, fertilizing a normal secondary oocyte that's X, you're going to end up with XYY, and that's what we see over here. So XYY is the most common genotype for Jacob syndrome. So one X chromosome, two Y chromosomes. Now, if we had extra X chromosomes, we actually saw those extra ones were inactivated. They were uh, converted to bar bodies, and so they're transcriptionally inactive. Okay? Um, and that was actually something that was described by the Lyon hypothesis. So go back and watch the video over that if you need more details. In contrast to bar bodies and X chromosome inactivation, extra Y chromosomes are not inactivated. Okay? They just stay there and they will still continue to express genes. Okay? And so that means that you, there are no bar bodies for Y chromosomes or equivalent structures. They're both active. Okay? So here we have two Y chromosomes. Here we actually have three, although this genotype is extremely rare, but they're both considered types of Jacob syndrome. So two things about Jacob syndrome that I want to mention are that one, uh, these individuals who have this um, are absolutely indistinguishable from the rest of the population. Okay? Um, there is the chance that they can be a slight amount taller, a slightly higher amount of muscle mass, but not enough to where you'd look at somebody and say, oh, that guy has Jacob syndrome. No, they're pretty much indistinguishable from the rest of the population. 
And one of the reasons for that, and I say this very loosely, understand, uh, is due to the almost incompetent nature of the Y chromosome. Okay, so what I mean by that is, if we compare now the X chromosome, we, we understand that the X chromosome is absolutely necessary for life. If you, for whatever reason, had a genotype of just Y and no X chromosome, that organism's not even viable, okay? The X chromosome is necessary for life. Also, the X chromosome is much larger in comparison to the Y chromosome, has a lot more genes on it, and a lot of those genes are very, very important for just general cellular processes, okay? So the X chromosome has a lot of neat stuff on it, a lot of important stuff, Obviously, you have to have at least one or you're not viable. In contrast, the Y chromosome really is not anything special. In fact, the Y chromosome really only has things on it that encode maleness. So basically things that would make somebody male. So I don't have any of the genes memorized off the top of my head, at least their names, but I can tell you that the Y chromosome encodes proteins that you only, only find inside sperm cells. Um, it encodes basically the development or directs the development of the testes in utero, but there's actually really nothing on the Y chromosome that's necessary for life. I mean, that makes sense, right? If there were, then all females would be messed up because none of them have a Y chromosome. So clearly there's nothing on the Y chromosome that's necessary for life. Um, there are some genes on there that do encode things that are in normal cellular processes, but there are backup genes identical to those on the X chromosome. So there's really nothing on the Y chromosome that is necessary for life. That being said, if you have two Y chromosomes, there's no gene on there that if you had extras of it would mess up cellular processes. I mean, for example, look at trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. Those individuals are mentally retarded and have a lot of other issues and physical abnormalities and all they have is an extra chromosome 21. But of course, chromosome 21 has a bunch of other important cellular genes on it. The Y chromosome doesn't have anything like that. So that's why if you have an extra one of these, there's really no significant abnormalities that are observable. In fact, one out of every 1,000 males has Jacob's syndrome. I actually looked up that statistic. And most of them have no idea that they have it because it doesn't really lead to any issues. The second thing I want to discuss is a misconception about Jacob's syndrome, and that's that having extra Y chromosomes inherently makes you more violent. Um, that's actually not true. That was based on a flawed study that was done in prisons, where supposedly there was a huge percentage of, of inmates in some prison that actually had Jacob's syndrome when they did some genetic testing. But overall, that has since been proven to not be correct. Simply having an extra Y chromosome does not make you a more violent person. It does not make you more... Uh, prone to committing crimes. Um, in fact, like I said, these individuals are almost completely indistinguishable from normal individuals. In fact, if you're watching this video and you're male, there is actually a small chance that you actually have Jacob's Syndrome and don't even know it. Okay? Um, and again, like I mentioned, you can have more than one extra. So here we have two extra Y chromosomes. None of them are inactivated. They're all transcriptionally active and we don't see any bar bodies. Okay? So hopefully I explained Jacob's Syndrome very well to you. Hopefully you have a grasp of what it is and what causes it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.